Okay, we're going to remove these little pull plugs from where the kidney intake is. There's a plug there, there's a plug in there, there's a plug over there, and a plug right there. And for that we'll use a set of needle you know, nose pliers um, to remove them out. To remove them. So we put the pliers in, pull out, and uh, extract it. So once you extract the, uh, the pin, the head there, um, it will come right out and then make sure you put that aside and keep all your parts in a nice neat area. So now that I've removed all of the, uh, the push pins, um, this detaches by lifting up and over and this will disconnect from the, uh, the air box simply by pulling it. The next piece of the air box simply uh, detach it by lifting up. The uh, SMG relay uh, is pulled out and um, the orientation for mine at least had the lettering pointing towards the back of the car or pointing towards the driver. Um, be sure to remember that when you put it back in because it looks like it can actually go back in um, backwards the way the uh, the pins line up. So The strut tower brace uses a 13 millimeter socket. Be sure to take the two uh, bolts off on each side. Now's a good time to uh, clean up any dirty areas as you see. Uh, if you're anal retentive like I am, you'll um, you want to have your engine bay clean. So you can use this time to wipe down any dirty spots. Uh, I'm putting the uh, the nuts back onto the uh, the strut tower bolts, the strut tower brace bolts, so I don't lose them. Um, you might want to remove the, the cabin filter housing. It's pretty easy. There are three little um, uh, little uh, screw type spring screws that pop up. There's one on the other side. Once that's up, you just pull this out and over. Once unscrewed, just lift and pull. You're not going to break anything. It's a little snug. And then put that aside. Um, if you're smart, you also use this time to uh, replace a dirty cabin uh, filter if you have an extra one. Once the uh, air filter element is out, the next step you're going to do is unclip the uh, some of the cables here, this little housing because you're going to want to remove ah, step over. you're going to want to slide this whoop, don't do that. you're going to want to slide this cable out of the way so that you could pull this entire housing this whole unit is going to come off there are some uh, screws or uh, Torx nut screws in, in the rear that you're going to pull out before you pull the Torx screws out I strongly recommend using a paper towel or even some tape and clogging these uh, drain holes. Um, I don't think you want to lose that little screw in case it falls in there. There's one on, on the driver's side and then one on the passenger side. So you use a T30 uh, Torx screw to loosen this uh, housing up. Okay, now that those Torx screws are out, we previously removed um, this cable from the housing here. If you look behind it, there's another cable. It's the uh, positive terminal ca um, cable for the uh, battery jump start. Um, you simply want to loosen that so that you can pull it from here. Once that's clear, and you remove everything, you should be able to lift up towards you to unlodge or dislodge uh, this. Might be something else holding it in. Now, oh, there's a piece over here that you want to pull through. I think that should be it. Yep. And you pull and lift up and out. It's kind of heavy. Back to the air box um, to remove or open the uh, air box. Air box, wow. The air filter housing. Uh, we're going to simply push these metal clips back. If it's a little stuck and you're weak like me, you can use your finger or you could use a, uh, a screwdriver. Just be careful not to um, scratch any of the plastic. To remove the mass airflow sensor, you're going to need a security torx bit. What's a security torx bit? Well, I don't know if you, there's a little pimple or dimple, if you will, in the center of the um, what would otherwise be a torx screw head. Um, and you need a special bit that has a hole in the center of it to remove it. Uh, this is a T... T15 is what you need, a security bit, in order to uh, remove the MAF sensor. Once you unscrew the two T15 security Torx bits, uh, pull. It might be a little stuck. There's a O-ring that uh, 
prevents air from leaking or, or seeping in. Um, pull it, remove it, be careful not to damage this. This part is very expensive and there's a sensor uh, or on the bottom of it, so be very careful. So to remove the mass airflow sensor piece from the, um, the female housing, you're going to push on these two side clips, one there and one there at the same time, and pull apart. And eventually it will disconnect and you can put this aside. Again, be careful with this. It's an expensive piece and you don't want to damage any of the componentry in case you want to revert back Again, to Again, when you're done, um, to keep things organized, put the uh, screws back into the uh, air filter housing so you don't lose them. I mentioned them. earlier you want to be careful with the mass airflow sensor. If you happen to have a extra anti-static bag from a recent hard drive purchase, um, it would be a good place to put the, uh, the sensor. Otherwise, uh, I don't know what to tell you. To remove the air filter housing, you're going to lift up from the driver's side and you're going to pull away. It's going to be hard to get this. You're going to pull away. Hold on. Come on. There we go. Yep. Okay. You're going to pull away. Lift and pull. Like thus. Next, use a 6 millimeter socket, or you can even use a flathead screwdriver, but um, I don't want to risk scratching anything, so just put that on there and loosen that clamp up so that you can um, basically remove. Okay, let go, let go. There you go. So basically, you can remove uh, this from that. You'll separate them. To remove the air filter housing from the elbow, uh, it's a very snug fit. If you look underneath, you see it starting to separate. All I'm doing is I'm lifting and pulling, uh, lifting and, and kind of bending it downward. And it'll eventually come out. Make sure you loosen the, the clamp and push it back. Uh, otherwise, it can get in the way of this lip right here. Because that's where it's, um, it's well connected to. For giggles, I wanted to illustrate the surface area difference between the stock uh, air filter, which is arguably as large as uh, the one on my M42 powered 318IS. Um, and uh, the CSL uh, air filter. It's uh, probably twice as large. For the HI or the xenon ballast, um, we're going to pull these off carefully. Okay. Uh, we're also going to remove that. We're going to listen to text messages. To disconnect this, Basically, you're going to squeeze the two edges together, squeeze it, and it'll just pop, it'll pop right up. Okay. There's also one over there. Uh, to remove the last part of the uh, housing here, use a set of needle nose pliers and gently press uh, the piece together, and then pull upwards, and it should pop right up. To remove the uh, bottom half of the uh, air filter housing, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket. To, uh, take that nut off. Once you get the housing piece open, there's another 10 millimeter nut right there. Be careful that these pieces that hold on to the air box uh, housing don't fall off. Mine did, and it fell uh, into the crack over there, so I'll get it when I get this thing out. Then you'll need to loosen this 10 millimeter nut in order to get this plastic housing out from the uh, the ballast. Be careful around the the, uh, the ballast. There's a lot of voltage, so. You want to yourself. So you're going to pull up on this. You want to clear the um, where you took the nut off the ballast, and um, it's going to get stuck on the lower intake vent, in the jiggy, and uh, you're going to try to pull it out. But the coolant, <laughs> the coolant pipe is probably going to get in the way, so you might have to clear. So if you lift this straight up, um, the lower part of the uh, housing will come out and um, you'll have a clear view into your your engine bay. My uh, That little clamp that I was telling you about right there, this guy right there, uh, fell down onto the floor so I lucked out. Otherwise it was getting stuck uh, over there. Next we're going to use the six millimeter uh, socket to loosen up the, uh, the clamp uh, on the other end of the elbow that goes into the air plenum. Also, I tightened the uh, opposite side so that it wouldn't fall off or, or get lost somewhere. Uh, before I'm able to remove the elbow, I want to get this uh, line out of the way. Um, you're going to pinch. You're going to pinch this closed carefully. Pinch and pull away, and it should come right so out. So I bought this Schwaben 
uh, trim removal set. There's another piece over here, and uh, I've been using it all along to help lift up some uh, some of the pieces next to the metal. It's nice because it doesn't scratch metal; it's a hard plastic. So I've been using it to help uh, pry away this uh, rubber elbow. It's really hard on mine. Uh, I would imagine it might be hard on yours too. And uh, so I've been using this to gently pry away as much as I can away from the, uh, the air plenum to help I want to move this piece. Something. Uh, this is going to be difficult to remove because there's a, um, difficult to see, there is a piece of plastic that extends from, from this housing all the way down, all the way down, and all the way underneath. This piece right, that piece right here goes around. So it basically, there is a, uh, a cushion, if you will, between this, the strut tower, and the elbow. So as you try to pull this out, it rubs into, rubs into, uh, into this. So just be careful and uh, try your best to, to pull that out. Sorry to keep coming back to this, but it really is a difficult piece. So far, everything in this uh, engine bay has been really easy to remove, except for this elbow. Um, what I did was make sure as you're separating it from the, uh, the air plenum, you're really going around the entire circumference of what's on the air plenum. And uh, just keep pulling away and eventually it'll break free. There's a lip uh, on the edge of this and on the inside of this. It's uh, probably difficult to see. Not scratching the car. This, uh, this plastic inside actually comes out. It moves. So as you're pulling it apart, yeah, there we go. See, this comes out. This gets stuck on this, uh, and it makes it difficult to remove. So just keep prying. Eventually, it'll come off, and then you're you're home free. And now we have a nice clear view into my airbox, and it's not so bad looking. Some oil, but so not so bad. Out, once you remove this hose from the plenum, it goes through uh, this little rubber grommet. This piece, this rubber strip. It's hard to see with this lighting in here. This rubber strip raises up, and once you pull that up, you'll be able to lift this up, you'll be able to pull this through, and you'll notice that this little bracket connects there, all right? And this is where the top of the, uh, oh, you don't want to lose that, that comes off actually, so be careful. Uh, this is where the, uh, the cover for the DME uh, goes, so it holds this cable in from uh, from moving around. To remove the uh, dipstick from the air plenum, use a 10 millimeter socket to loosen up. Uh, that Make sure you put the nut back onto the uh, air plenum. We're working to remove this line, the vacuum line. Um, I would recommend to disconnect this uh, adapter. Um, to remove, you push down and pull out and pull away. And that should be it. Move that out of the way and then uh, that looks like it's on there pretty tight. It might require some force. Be careful. Uh, this all goes to the master uh, brake cylinder to create a vacuum. So um, be careful. This might pull out from here or here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull out from that side. Well, if I looked at my box of parts, I'd see that I actually so when <laughs> see you buy where this it comes hose, out from. Part ending in uh, 647. This whole unit actually comes out from here. Uh, and then you'll plug, you'll plug the, uh, the adapter back into there. This will get snaked. This will get snaked back through that hole and go back onto the top of the uh, the new carbon air box. So we're going to remove this from okay. that piece. So I just removed this stock piece. Uh, it was pretty easy actually. The key to success is to um, pull it out, uh, or, or get it out from beneath the, uh, in between the, um, the firewall piece here. Um, you're going to pick this rubber piece up, you're going to push this out so that you can remove this from there, and then you're going to slide it through so that it's no longer in, in between. Uh, this might bend a little bit, that's okay. Um, once you get it in here, twist it away from that edge while holding it, and pull apart. It'll come right out. So to remove the crankcase vent hose, um, you're going to squeeze really hard on these two pieces, the one that's front and aft. Um, squeeze and pull up, and it should come right out. Be careful, because there should be some oil that drips out of there. So just leave it in there until you're ready to take it out. But it's loosened and, uh, and pretty much ready to go.